Hello, my name is Pete. I'm a Belgian Fujifilm ambassador and I'm super excited because I recently got this in my mailbox and this is the TT350F flash for Fujifilm by Godox. And one of the nice things about this flash is not so much the flash part of it because it's just a small flash. Um, might be cool for some fill flash, but the mo for me the more important thing is that it's got a built-in radio commander and it actually will allow me to trigger these big boys from Godox, the AD600 and the little brother, the AD200, which is also a fairly new flash by the way, it will allow to trigger them remotely while controlling them from my camera. Um, I will be using the GFX on this shoot, but what, I, what you will see also works perfectly with the X-T2, the X-Pro2 and if I recall correctly the X-T1 as well. And one of the cool features of this system is that it also supports high speed sync and TTL. So you'll regularly see me uh, increase shutter speeds up to a thousand or even a four thousand of a second and this system just keeps on going and even with relatively little power loss so that's also a really cool feature so let's have a look at how it goes in the field Okay, so we are here at the uh, port of Ghent, near a railway station as you've heard. And we're here to test some new equipment, a lot of new equipment actually. First of all, the new 23GF lens, the wide-angle lens for the Fujifilm GFX. Then we've also got a cool new um, accessory, the TT350F by Godox, which will allow us to trigger our Godox flashes. And we're gonna wait a while for the, for the train here. So for example, I'm, I will actually not use this flash as a flash today, but simply as a radio transmitter. So the flash itself will be turned off. And I will be using this slide here, the uh, Godox AD600B in the States. This is um, also known as Flashpoint, for example. Um, but here in Europe, it's the AD600B. B stands for Bowen's Mount. It's, this is the TTL version. Um, and one of the cool things about this flash is you see this is a monoblock, but you can convert it into a pack and head system. So for example, I can take off the bulb here and then I can put um, this H600B accessory head on it. And especially as you will be seeing uh, right up, I will be using a, a boom stand with a voice activated light stand. And this is just too heavy to put on that boom stand. But if I'm using the uh, this system here i can just put this on my softbox and by the way this is one of my favorite softboxes this is is the smdv alpha 110 it's a 110 centimeter softbox so relatively big and very easy to set up and uh, break down and so now this becomes a relatively lightweight uh, pack and head system which i can easily attach to my um, light stand here. This is a Lastolite non-rotating extending handle is the full term. Um, okay, so we've also got another accessory that's over there. That's another new thing we want to test and uh, that is the uh, AD200 by Godox which is uh, the 200 watt second small flash. It's about the size of a speed light but it's uh, two and a half times as powerful. And I will be using this one as a rim light. So if we have a look at the screen here of the, of the TT350, you see, so it's now set up in commander mode and I just press the slave button. And for example, the M for master, so the flash itself is turned off as you can see. And then um, group A is set at full power, we will see if this is necessary or not. Group B, which is the AD200, is also full power. These are just settings from yesterday, so I will see what's necessary. And there is no group C, so for the moment, I've turned group C off. I'm working in manual, but if I want to, I could also use uh, TTL. And one of the nice things is, as you can see here on the little icon, the H icon with the Thunderbolt, is that um, this system is capable of doing high-speed sync. 
So especially when you're shooting dancers uh, moving or you want to have nice shallow depth of field, uh, wide open apertures, then high speed sync is really cool to have and it's one of the first systems, um, the Godox system, to um, have high speed sync on the, um, on the Fuji. And I'm really excited about that, um, especially because normally the GFX has a sync speed of 1 1 25th, which is sometimes a little bit limit as, uh, with regards to uh, introducing uh, camera shake and everything, especially on the longer lenses. And also, um, for example here, I will probably be shooting at a thousandth of a second, not as much to capture the high speed sync, but rather to um, to have the shallow depth of field. So let's see how we go. Okay, so as I also explain in my books on uh, off-camera lighting, the first thing you always want to do when you're using flash on location is start with the ambient exposure. That is, you turn off your flashes and you just make sure that the background exposure is set up the way you want it. In this case, that is mainly the sky and the, the water here and the boats in the background, because those are not affected by your flash. So you have to make sure that their exposure, which is only caused by the available light, is, is looking good. As a result, generally when you're shooting outside, the model will be underexposed, but as she's in reach of the flash, there's no problem there and we can easily adjust the flash power to taste. But so first I have turned off my um, commander here. So I will just make an uh, available light shot and I will set up my uh, light the way I want it. And I will keep an eye on, on how the clouds are looking. So, um, all right. So I'm now at um, a thousandth of a second F4. And this gives me actually a pretty, pretty good exposure. Um, let's make it another test shot. So um, yeah, it's looking pretty nice. I, the GFX can be set up to show highlight clipping and I don't see any clipped highlights. Our model is slightly dark, Franny, but that's not a problem, as I said, because we have the, we have the flash. Now I will turn, generally when I'm using more than one flash, I will uh, turn them on both uh, separately. So I'm also slightly going to, I was at 1000 F4 ISO 100. I want a little bit more depth of field, so I'll move to 5.6 and I'll go put my ISO on 200 instead. Can you move your um, left arm up a little bit? Yeah, okay. And your right arm also, if you, yeah, no, not, a little bit less. That's fine. Great. Okay. Yeah, that's looking pretty nice. Okay, so um, we have our main light over there. And this is one of my favorite shooting positions, actually with the light behind the subject facing slightly back to the camera. Um, there's a lot of stress on the light pole, I see. So we'd better not take too long or we'll have a light in the water probably. Um, so, Franny, can you do the same as you were? Yeah, perfect. A little bit higher with the uh, left arm. Okay, perfect. Also the right arm a little bit higher. Okay, excellent. Thank you. I'm adjusting my settings a little bit. I've opened up my aperture to uh, F5. ISO lowered it a bit but again. I want the background to be slightly darker. All right, that's a nice balance for me. So now I have this balance and I'm gonna turn on the second light because I want a bit of a kicker light. Uh, that's group B. And again, it's really fun to be able to control this right from the camera. So uh, it's now set up to almost full power. Remember, this is an AD200, so it's not as powerful. Uh, okay, but as you can see, this gives a nice bit of separation. And I'll probably crank it up a little bit more. I'm gonna put it at full power. Can you turn yourself a little bit? Yeah, this way. Okay, excellent. And there's some hair in your eye. Okay. Left arm up a little bit, please. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Godox are actually working on a, on a new uh, adapter um, which will allow you to put two AD200s in one 
Bowen's type adapter. So you'll be able to combine two of them to a 400 watt second flash, which is pretty cool. So a very versatile system. And that's what I like about it. Okay, and I think this one is good. Thank you. I'm gonna switch to, uh, you can relax for a second. I'm gonna switch to another lens now because I have this all set up. I'm gonna switch to another quite new lens, which is the 110 uh, F2. And I'm gonna just, for fun's sake, do the same shot, but at a slightly further away distance and play with the 110 F2 just to see how it throws the background out of focus. So let's uh, put that lens on. That's the one, yes. And so again, this is the fun of having high speed sync. At, uh, if you want to shoot at F2, probably I'm going to need an aperture of, or a sync speed of like a 4000 or something. And if I didn't have high speed sync, I would have to use ND filters, which are all fine, but it's just another layer of complexity. And the nice thing about Godox's implementation of high speed sync is that you don't lose a lot of power, apparently. I don't know how they fixed it, but generally in high speed sync, you tend to lose a lot of power. You lose, easily lose, use, uh, lose one or two stops. And I have the impression that with this system, they've managed to uh, do a better job. So that's really cool. Um, okay. Actually, it's quite fun. You sitting just like there. I'll probably have to set my shutter speed at 1 4,000th, which is the max of this camera. And the ISO to 100, just to be able to uh, keep the aperture of f2. Then I have to put this a little bit more back because it's in my shot. These are the Manfrotto 1004 BAC. And the AC doesn't have anything to do with air conditioning, but with air cushioned. And I really like them uh, for this kind of work. Oh, there we have a train. Uh, I kind of like that with the tutu blowing up. Um, all right. Really cool. Even now I still have some um, overexposure on the, on the ballet shoes, but I think we can take care of that in post-production. Or I can close it down to uh, 2.8, but I don't want to do that. Uh, okay, Franny, it's for real. Uh, I need the light to come from a little bit more from the front, so a little bit more like this. If you can, if you can hold it like this. This goes to prove that you don't need a lot of locations, you just need one good location and there's all kinds of stuff happening here. Okay, cool. So, um, I'm having the light come in from a relatively low angle because I want to fill in the shadows that are caused by the sun, which is way too high. Uh, I actually have a little bit of the, the light pole in the frame, so um, yeah. Okay, let's try this. Can you look slightly up into the light? Into the flashlight, I mean, obviously, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to turn down the power a bit now of the flash. Okay. I actually like for this shot, I like the spontaneous poses best. I'm just w waiting to see what happens. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you.